Question is, can you help us understand a multi-dimensional universe? What would be the dimensions we are unaware of? Any dimension higher than uh, the three that we're familiar with or the actual four that we're embedded in? We live in a four-dimensional world. And that might sound a little flaky or freaky, but consider the following fact. You have never met someone at a place unless it was also at a time. And you have never met someone at a time unless it was also at a place. That requires four dimensions of wait, coordinates. Wait, 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 wait. What about in a dream? Is, is, is the dream happening inside your head? Yes. <laughs> I don't know when. <laughs> so the, Just... the only point is, we know intuitively that we need four dimensions to localize someone to meet up with them. Especially when, well, only two dimensions if you don't have tall buildings. You have tall buildings, you need the third dimension. So you don't say, I'll meet you at the 20th floor of, you know, on 721 Park Avenue. What time? Okay? There's a full four dimensions going on there. So just I want to convince you we live in a four-dimensional world for that reason. Okay. It may be that these four dimensions are manifest to us but that in fact we are embedded in, higher in a higher dimensional space. And string theorists on the frontier of this exercise are hypothesizing at least 10 dimensions to account for everything we see in the universe, even if we do not directly measure those dimensions themselves. Now, with your permission, may I go on a dimensional uh, journey with you? May I? Might take you on a journey? A, a dimensional odyssey. Odyssey. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Are we ready? Just get ready for this. Okay. Um. <laughs> what <are you? laughs> so, I'm at my desk, and the desk is a surface, okay? And I start putting pages down on the desk. I'm tiling them on the desk. And then I run out of room. I have exhausted the two dimensions of the surface of my desk. We have ways of accommodating this problem. And so we have page organizers that go upwards. So now when I don't have any more surface area, area of the desk, I can enter a third dimension and put pages there. If you are an ant embedded in this two-dimensional world of the surface of my desk, and you fill up the desk with these sheets of paper, the ant will say, there is no more room. And I say, yes, there is. Watch me. And I take a piece of paper off the desk put it in the page organizer, and according to the ant that's embedded in the two dimensions, that page disappeared. It disappeared into a dimension that ant does not have access to. What a brilliant invention this is. You can put practically an unlimited number of pages, far more pages above the desk than on the desk. So access to a third dimension is an extraordinarily useful storage device does, for a two-dimensional creature. Does the ant trust you that what it cannot see is nevertheless there? You have to then talk to it about this extra dimension. <laughs> and then it will have to just trust you. Yes. Because watch what happens next. I now have my three-dimensional room, and I'm filling it with boxes. Now I've run out of space to put the boxes. But now an alien, a four-dimensional alien looks at us and says, I got this. Just move it into the fourth dimension. What are you talking about? And the alien comes in, reaches in, takes one of the boxes, and then the box disappears. Disappears. It went into a fourth dimension. And this was captured in the film Monsters, Inc. Did you guys see this film? <laughs> these are monsters that work in a door factory, and they make these doors, and they 
open the door, and it is the door of a kid's bedroom or their closet. And they step through, and they're in the kid's closet. And then they scare the kid, because that's their job. They're monsters, <laughs> okay? This doorway is a portal through the fourth dimension and then back to the third. So imagine a new storage system. We just go to, to Home Depot and buy a door. And that door is your portal to a fourth dimension. You open the door, put your boxes, close the door, and you look on the other side of the door, there's nothing there. So this is what's going on when you have access to higher dimensions. Wait, don't you have to then talk to somebody? Because as far as you know, if you're a scientist and you need data, what you have is something that you had, it's gone, and now a voice says, I've got this. Yeah, if, if is that data? If it's a voice from the fourth dimension, I'm, I'm going to listen to it. So does every dimension I'm not going to say, no, you're not. I, I, if, if there's a voice coming out of the fourth dimension and makes one of my boxes disappear, I'm thinking it's got more power than I do and more knowledge of the space-time continuum. So I'm going with it. Now, does that mean that in order for a scientist to credit another dimension with real, with real existence, it will need a testifier from beyond? So you need a dimension plus a dimension... A dimension voice? A dimension. Yeah, a dimension, a dimensionless voice. Okay. Yeah. That comes from another from another place. Mm -hmm. Now, there are things that happen in quantum physics that kind of defy our sensibilities. Like particles pop in and out of existence. They don't they, they defy any rational attempt to understand it. Particles can be entangled with one another. A particle can be here and there's a barrier and it can spontaneously show up on the other side of the barrier at faster than the speed of light. All of this is just mysterious. Let me ask you, suppose you have a sphere and I live in a two-dimensional world and you take this hollow sphere, so it's a shell, and you pass that sphere through my two-dimensional universe. How will I describe that? I will say, this point just appeared out of nowhere. Oops, now it's a circle, a small circle. And that circle's getting bigger by the moment. Oh my gosh, oh, it reached a maximum size. Now that circle's just shrinking. It's shrinking. Oh, now it's a point. Now the whole thing disappeared. This would be completely freaky to a two-dimensional being. But it makes complete sense if you live in three dimensions and you pass a sphere through my universe. So who is to say? that some of the mysterious things we are describing accurately, but don't otherwise make sense, make sense in a higher dimension. And these are just the manifestations of higher dimensional phenomena in our world. And that's an aspect of what these higher dimensional physicists are trying to establish. At this point. Now, now I want to totally blow their minds, if I can, oh, sure. if I may. But you got to stay with me on this, OK? We're all, we're all Upper East Siders, so you got this. You ready? Okay. These are not all Upper East Siders. <laughs> there are suspiciously un-Upper East Side people <laughs> littering the room. Uh, okay. <laughs> but you got to stay with me, okay? A point has no dimensions. There's no height, width, depth, so it has zero dimensions. A line has one dimension, length. Okay? A square has two dimensions, so the height and width. A cube has three dimensions, height, width, depth. We got this. Now follow me. A line is one-dimensional, but it's bounded by two zero-dimensional things. Those are the points. One dimension bounded by two zero-dimensional points. A square is two dimensions bounded by four one-dimensional sides. A cube is three dimensions 
bounded by six two-dimensional sides. So in other words, the dimensions of your sides are going up. Your line is bound by zero-dimensional points. Your square is bound by two-dimensional lines. I mean, by, by, um, uh, by one-dimensional sides. The cube is bound by two-dimensional squares. Okay? So we're going up two, four, six. Two points, four sides of a square, six sides of a cube. And each side is one dimension less. They're squares on the sides of a cube. They're lines on the side of a square. They're dots on the sides of a, of a line. Let's go up to a four-dimensional cube. A four-dimensional cube has eight sides. A regular cube had six sides. We're going up by two. A four-dimensional cube has eight sides. And each of those sides is a three-dimensional cube. One dimension down from itself. In the same way, each side of a three-dimensional cube is a two-dimensional square. So when you get to four dimensions, the sides are three-dimensional surfaces. And you can take this all the way up. And our brains can't picture what we call a hypercube, in some circles a tesseract. We can't picture a volume bounded by three-dimensional cubes. What does it even mean? This is because we evolved in the plains of Africa, just not wanting to get eaten by a lion. Our neurosynapses are ill-equipped to do, to, to do the distance on this. And this is why we invent mathematics that can take us there. Well, the